I want to ask you a question. How many of you feel that you have a stressful job or a stressful life? Okay. I think we can all agree that just sometimes life is a bit overwhelming, right? But what if you have to like double this stress? What if you have to work two jobs, full-time full jobs? Some people do that, and some people don't have the choice. <coughs> Take my sister, for example. That is uh, Ida, and she is a lawyer in a big company in Poland. And it is a fairly stressful job. She often works long hours, and at some point she really needs a break. So she goes and goes for vacation. She takes the breath, and when she is back, she's ready to face another day. But she has this second job, a job that she did not apply for, and a job that doesn't pay and the job that she cannot quit. Ida has type 1 diabetes. There's no vacation for this kind of job. So imagine that you have this second shift, because your pancreas decided to quit for no good reason. You are now the head of blood glucose balancing department of your body. Congratulations. And your new duties are to measure your blood glucose level and adjust it. Every time you wake up, go to sleep, take a nap, before eating, after eating, when you feel weird, or do anything that can influence your blood glucose level, which is almost everything. So blood, needles, calculations, general inconvenience, all that is included. Sprinkle some pain on that, and you get yourself a description of diabetes. Well, no. Not really. I learned that this kind of description, which is a standard description, really lacks the resolution. So I wanted to really go deeper into this problem, to understand it, because it's really hard to see it from the distance. I really wanted to see it through my sister's eyes. So I listened to stories of people. I looked, I followed their uh, communities online, which, is, which are a lot, there are a lot of them. I try to understand what they express through their art, and also I use the equipment myself. Um, and my mission became to make testing the blood glucose a little bit less impactful. And I have developed this concept of new glucose meter that addresses three main things. It's called IDA. Um, it addresses the issue of pain, the issue of access, and the issue of stress, psychological stress. OK, so one of the biggest problems with diabetes is treatment adherence, which basically means doing your tests and adjusting your blood. So it, it turns out that having access to the equipment and the medication does not translate one-to-one -one into using it. Why? Okay, so it's complex, but here's one thing. One in 10 people, depending on the country, has diabetes. And that adds up to thousands of millions of people. And in this huge population, there's a whole spectrum of different characters. Different, really different characters. And what I also learned is that there are different styles of coping with the disease like diabetes. There are um, evasion-oriented people, and solution-oriented people. And those styles, they depend on your character. So what that means is that your temperament determines how you act and how you perceive things in the face of your illness management. And this is not addressed by products out there. I think it could be, and it should be. So here's one thing about uh, Evasion-oriented people, they are very emotional. So for them, the number is a judge, the result of the test. They often map the value, the quality of the, of the value, to the quality of themselves. And that can produce sort of like measuring phobia. 
So what it means is that a lot of people don't measure not because they don't have access and, or they are afraid of needles. They don't measure because it's too much of a psychological hit to them every time when they, say, when they see something that they don't expect. And they don't measure altogether, which is a problem, obviously. So how about this? How about we can uh, decide if we see the exact number or just a range? Of course, when you're doing a treatment decision, when you do calculation, you need the number. And it's there for you. But you can decide. You can choose to see it or not. This creates a smaller um, emotional investment for every test. It puts you back in control. Now, don't get me wrong. It, this sort of UX intervention does not try to be protective. You see, treating phobias is about making people tougher. And you make people tougher by exposing them to what they fear voluntarily, step by step you give them back their sense of control. This might seem trivial and small, but those small things, they become big things when they're repeated over and over. So another thing is technology. Um, the thing with technology is that we are using the same for since 40 years. And I think that we should improve it. There's, 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 a, there's a way to improve that. And we are sending a car into space and landing a probe on Mars, but then again, we cannot figure out a non-invasive blood glucose measurement. This is weird for me. So I looked into the, all the attempts, all the uh, previous attempts of gaining this achievement, and the, the, all, the, all the efforts are aimed at truly non-invasive solutions. And I thought, OK, can we take this, this uh, 30 years of worth of research, reframe it, and apply it to the invasive measuring context and fix something there? And the answer seems to be yes, yes, I think we can. Maybe even something more. But what, what's wrong with, uh, with test strips anyway? OK, so the list is long, so here's the short list. Uh, first, single use. then. You use a bunch of them, they cost a fortune, and sometimes they don't work. So instead of that, IDA is using a robust sensor with an optical measuring system. That means a lot of less consumables, a smaller device footprint, and the fact that this cheap sensor can cover up to 50 tests and also can measure hemoglobin. And there's one more thing, the pain, the, the obvious pain. By the way, these are fingers of 12 years old. Um, every time you measure in a traditional way, you sacrifice your blood. And it's no fun. And people are desperate for help for years, and obviously. And it turns out that we can use the same technology to provide a non-invasive, pain-free measurement when your gl glucose concentration is above 80 milligrams per deciliter. And what that means is that before you prick your finger, you can actually test if you really need to. And I think this is pretty huge already. So a massive amount of tests can be replaced or at least made a little less impactful by this technology and people's lives can be a little less stressful. And I really think that this is something worth fighting for. When I was working on this project, I obviously talked a lot with my sister. And once she asked me this question, and it really stuck with me. She asked me, if you could use your design superpowers for good, what would be the most meaningful good for you? And I believe, I want to believe that the answer is somewhere along the lines of to decrease the unnecessary suffering. And I think to do that, we need to first understand what this suffering means to other people. What is so compelling for me when designing for chronic diseases like diabetes is that you don't design to um, 
impress or, or please. You design because people are on fire, and you might just have the water. Thank you. <laughs>